بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد لله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع إليه السبيل It is the right of Allah over the people to make hajj of his house. So this is a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that a person has been given the opportunity to be invited by Allah Rabbul Alameen. How the ulama explain externally we have the Baytullah, internally our heart should be the Baytullah. Clean the heart of Allah and put Allah only in this heart. This heart should be drowning only in the love of Allah. Whereas if a person doesn't have Allah in their heart, then outwardly there will be all the signs of Allah. There will be the Baytullah, there will be Sai, Safa, Marwa, there will be Zamzam, there will be Arafah, there will be Mina, Muzdalifa. There will be all the signs to take one close to Allah, but every step they'll get further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like a person reading Salah is ghafil of Allah, negligent of Allah, so would his Hajj, so would be his Umrah, so would be his visit to these Mubarak places. So a person should focus on the goal, Allah Rabbul Alameen. And the obstacles are there to take you closer to Allah. So on this journey that I'm going, no matter what obstacles you face, your goal should be Allah, then the obstacles will be easy. And remember, in, in any challenge, the resistance makes you stronger, makes you better. So any obstacles in my path to Allah, I will conquer it. When a person is miserable, he will focus on what he hates about life. But when he's got the right focus in maqsad, he will focus on what he loves about life. What he loves about that intikhab, about that moment. So you could be in the worst of situations and difficulties, but you will look for the good in it. So in these places where we are going, there will be challenges, there will be difficulties. We need to focus on the outcome, not the obstacle. Eventually, through this difficulty, I will find Allah. In these difficulties, in this hardship, there will be pain, there will be suffering. Don't focus on the pain, focus on the progress. So every thorn prick, every drop of perspiration, every hardship that you are going through, focus on the progress, where am I going to? So what are the possibilities of success, not the potential for failure? I'm going to go, I'm going to do it, I'm going to go till the end and what do I need to achieve? So we need to have this uh, singleness of purpose. That's where success comes. So it all starts with the intention. Imam Bukhari rahimahullah started his Bukhari Sharif in al amalu bin niyat. And in another narration, in al amalu bil khawatim. So your beginning and everything is based on the intention. So I need to start now. I've made a niyat, but my niyat is not for then, not when the journey happens. My niyat is now, whether I'm going or I'm not going. Now is the time to connect with my Allah. The key is in my hands. The instruction is clear. Sahaba had the mindset when they heard something, Sami'ana wa apa'ana. And not like the Bani Israel, Sami'ana wa asayna. We've heard we will contravene, we will go against what you are saying. Idhab anta wa rabbuka faqatila. You telling us to do this, you go do it with your Allah. Naudhu billah. We'll relax, we'll take easy, we need to enjoy life. 
So what the commands of Allah and His Rasul are, a person will say, no, now is not the time, I, I, I need to enjoy life, I need to secure my profile, I need to set up my business, I need to get established, I still need to get the dream car, I need to get the dream house. A lot of dreams, they remain dreams. Even if a person does get any of this, dunya does not satisfy any person. The car that you got will not be good enough, you'll need the next model. The next series, it will وَلَا يَمْلَفَاهُ إِلَّا تراب. It's only the sand of the grave that will satisfy this insan. So the instructions are clear. It is up to us to decide how far we want to go and where do we want to take it. Somebody went into a bookstore and asked the salesperson, I'm looking for the self-help section. So the salesperson told him, if I told you, it would defeat the purpose. If I told you, it would defeat the purpose. If you can't even find the self-help section, then nothing's going to help you on earth. At least you need to get there on your own. It's called the self-help section. So uh, on this journey of life, on this journey of Umrah and Hajj, on this Mubarak journey to the Haramain Sharifain, Shaitan will create a lot of barriers to you and Allah. We should make sure we don't get caught up in these uh, tricks, these traps, this uh, deception of Shaitan. And he's, he's, he's an expert in what he's doing, so we need to become experts in what we are doing. That's where it comes, sitting in the company of the ulama, make sure the company that you are going with on this journey is noble, is beneficial, they are people that will remind you of Allah, take you close to Allah. Otherwise, uh, if we haven't mastered our field and shaitan is a master in his field, then you know who will win. Allah protect one and all. It's like a person who went in a supermarket, so you notice an old elderly lady follow him around. So whenever he stopped, she stopped. And then she used to keep staring at him. So over time this transpired, carried on, she overtook him. And uh, when he was going to the checkout counter, she made sure she went in front of him. And then she addressed him saying, I hope I haven't made you uncomfortable. It's just that you look so much like my late son and he died like this and I've got nightmares and I, 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 I miss him a lot and you remind me of him. So the man said, okay, no problem. Um, I understand, I understand. So she, she said, you know, I, I, it, it seems a bit foolish, it seems a bit silly, but you know, just, just to console me, can you just for the last time say goodbye mother as I'm leaving? Just say goodbye mother. It'll make me so happy. I'll be so thrilled. It'll make my make my year, not my week, not my day. It'll make my year. So she went to the cash desk. She 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 checked out all her items and as she was leaving, he said goodbye mother. She waved back and smiled at him. So he was very happy that today an old lady, an old lady who was suffering, I was a means for her to be happy. I brought some sunshine in her life. And as he went to pay, his bill should have been a hundred dollars. And the lady at the counter said it's five hundred dollars. So he said, how come I've only bought items that should be under a hundred dollars? She said, yeah, sure, but your mother said, you'll pay for her. Your mother said, you'll pay for her. So that's a shaitan, this doka. So we have to identify our weaknesses where shaitan will trap me, what sins am I engaging, and I need to make tawbah and repent to Allah before I make this journey. Is it? Mujaddid Amil, Hazrat Manatani used to say that somebody came to him and said, I'm a habitual gambler, what is the remedy? I've got this sickness, I've got this disease. So Hazrat replied, courage is the remedy. And secondly, reserve, make this resolution, resolve firmly that whenever you indulge in gambling, 
you will impose on yourself a punishment. Maybe a hundred rakats of nafal salah whenever you do it. And uh, abstain from one meal, two meals, etc, etc. So one is you, you, you apply a punishment and you need to have courage and strive against fighting the dictates of the nafs. Then the man said, Hazrat, uh, my heart is devoid of love for my parents. So uh, Hazrat replied, just continue serving them. Have the, the mizaj, the mindset of khidma. And as you continue to serve them, that they've served me my entire life, I need to serve them for the rest of my life. So many years my parents served me, now I'm independent. Let me serve them for the rest of their life. So, a person making a niyat resolute that now immediately I will evaluate. And likewise, in these Mubarak places, what should I do? What, what are the amal to reach our climax, the peak in these ibadat? And with the niyat that I shouldn't be coming back when a person has an intention, when they go in. Mona said Khan and brothers used to go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 40 days and 4 months. You say your naql, your movement is different from the movement of Sahaba. Sahaba went with the intention of not coming back. You go with the intention that you have to come back. You fix your days, you wait for the days of return. So the Salaf, when they used to go for Hajj, they, they, they desired Shahada. That's why uh, Aswad, his Hajj, in his lifetime, the scholars have written thamanina min bayn hajjatin wa umratin. So between hajj and umrah, eighty, wa lam yajma baynahuma. Each one separate. Abdurrahman ibn Aswad, sitina ma bayn hajjatin wa umratin. Sixty, hajj and umrahs. Lam yajma baynahuma. Atta ibn Abi Rabah, Alam ibn Kathir is mentioned, Waqad Hajj al-Sab'een Hajjatan wa Ummira Mi'ata Sana. So uh, between his Hajj, he is done 70, and Allah gave him a life of a hundred years. Then uh, scholars have listed the people who have done Akthar min Arabeen Hajjatan. So that's where people say, no, he's going for Hajj every year. Why are you going for Hajj? Why are you spending so much money? No, it's fi sabilillah. Have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah has given you wealth, then, then, then spend it. It's, it's going in haq, it's going in the right path. Yes, when you're there, extravagance, wastage, etc. We have to have that ihsas and awareness. But those ulama who have done oh, more than 40 Hajj, Sayyid ibn Musayyab, Muhammad ibn Suqa, Bukair ibn Atik, ibn Abi Umar al-Adni, Sayyid ibn Sulaiman, Abbas ibn Samura, Ayyub al-Suqiyani, etc, 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 many ulama. So, a person is going to these Mubarak places again, near before, clean my slates. When I'm there, I cannot, I cannot break this record. So, the honor of these places is that when somebody invites you, you are the guest. Then one is you are rude. One is they've given instructions when you enter the palace, the king has invited you. When you enter the palace, these are the instructions. In front of the king, the exact instructions which he gave you, in front of him you perpetrated. So that's worse. That's the climax of ingratitude. So one of the signs of being grateful that Allah has accepted me for this journey is that a person does not commit guna, a person doesn't break Allah's commands, a person doesn't get engaged in layani, naud billah, people are recklessly eyeballing in front of the Baytullah. And he say, no, no, all these uh, mashallah aunties that are coming from different countries of the wo world, look so much noor on their faces. So I'm, I'm looking at the noor of the Baytullah and then I'm looking at the noor, Allah is bestowed with them, naud billah. So we wrong admit it, don't justify it. 
So that's a climax of ingratitude. Some people catch up on their movies, some people catch up on their social media. They've got time for the jail phone, the cell phone, the prison phone. They've got uh, time for, for all these gadgets and these websites which will trap them. But uh, we are in these Mubarak places. And the worst is that a person, if you do good, is multiplied a hundred thousand times, etc. If you do evil, it's multiplied. So there shouldn't be, if, if any place on earth there was a person who would look after the time, it's in these places here. So that's the climax of ingratitude. Ayaz was the king, he offered him sweet melon, he took one piece, he ate it, he, he, he savored it. He, he was in an ecstasy. Next piece, even more, and even more. Every piece that he ate, he displayed his extreme enjoyment and pleasure. So then the last piece, the king tasted it and he could not even swallow it. It was so bitter. So the king said, oh, Ayaz, you've ate every piece like there's nothing on earth like it. And I can't even put it on my tongue. How come? He said, O oh, king, there have been so much bounties that you have showered on me all my life. Now one moment, one opportunity in my life where there is some bitterness. There's no bitterness in it, there's sweetness only. So this difficulty, this perceived difficulty is not a difficulty, it's a pleasure. Because in every bite I was taking, I was, I was rem re reminded of your bounties your favor on me. So Allah has favored so much bounties on us that the climax of ingratitude is in these Mubarak places. We dare break Allah's command. We dare engage in all these activities. Talk bin Habib used to uh, narrate, قال عمر يا أهل مكة اتق الله في حرم الله في Allah in these Mubarak places in the Haram do you know who resided in these places? Malana Yusuf Amlali used to say, when you're making tawaf, realize the value of every step because your footstep is falling on the footstep of 124,000 Anbiya Ali approximately, and so much thousands of Sahaba, so much thousands of Sulaha where your footstep is falling, their footsteps also falling. Then Umar warned them and he said, Kana bihi banu fulan. So and so ya fa'ahallu hurmatahu fahalaku. What does haram? They made it halal, they were destroyed. Then so and so, same thing, fahalaku. They were destroyed. Hatta dhakra ma sha Allah min qabail al Arab. He mentioned different tribes and how Allah destroyed them. Then he said, Rada amal ashara khataya bi ghayrihi ahabba ilayya min an amala. Wahidatan bi Makkata. So, rather ten gunas somewhere else than one guna in Makkah. So, that kafiat of where you are, in front of who you are, whose company you are. Sufyan bin Uyena, you say that Ali ibn Hussein radiallahu anhuma. When he made Hajj, فَلَمَّا أَحْرَمَ وَاسْتَوَدْ بِهِ رَاحِلَتُهُ إِسْفَرَّ لَوْنُهُ When he went into Ihram and he mounted his conveyance, his color became pale and he started trembling and he fell off the conveyance, was shaking and he couldn't say the talbiya. So, so it was said to him, Lima la Why you are not saying the talbiya? He said, Akhsha ayyu qala li la labbaik wa la saadaik. I'm afraid it'll be told to me that your presence is not accepted. You are not invited here. 
Your invitation has been rejected. فَلَمَّا لَبَّا غَشِّ عَلَيْهِ وَوَكَعًا رَاهِ لَتِهِ He said, لَبَّاك He fell unconscious, fell off his conveyance. And that was his condition and kayfiyat. So, uh, this ihsas and awareness of where am I going? In whose presence am I going? Who's been here? What was their condition? Ali ibn Muwafak used to say that Hajjaj uh, to Sitin, I, I, I complete a 60 Hajj. Then when I finished, فَلَمَّا كَانَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ جَلَسْتُ فِي الْحَجْرَ I decided to فَكِّرُ فِي حَالِي I came, I did so much Hajj and uh, this place I've been here so often and وَلَا أَدْرِي I'm not sure if Allah has accepted my Hajj أَمْرَدَّ or it's rejected I was stressed, I was worried, I was in anxiety ثُمَّ نِمْتُ فَرَأَيْتُ فِي مَنَامِي I fell asleep in my dream. I seen somebody saying, هَلْ تَدْعُوا إِلَىٰ بَيْتِكَ إِلَّا مَنْ تُحِبْ Do you invite somebody to your house who you love or somebody who you dislike? They told me these words. Who do you invite to your house, your beloved or your enemy? فَاسْتَيْقَذْتُ I woke up in this condition realizing that it was the Allah Himself since I am the beloved of Allah, Allah is inviting me. So you are Allah's beloved. That's why you are going. So our mashayikh were very particular of going to these places. Abdullah ibn Wahhab used to distribute his time into three. One third for striving in Allah's path. One third to teach people in ta'aleem. And one third for hajj. وَذُكِرَ أَنَّهُ حَجَّ سِتَّ وَثَلَاثِينَ And it is mentioned that he made 36 hajj. So a person is chosen, these are Mubarak places, value the place, value the opportunity, look after every moment the amal for today is. مَنْ مَاتَ فِي تَرِيكِ مَكَّةَ ذَاهِبًا أَوْ رَاجًا Make a niyat that Allah must take me in this path. That's why you need to sort out your matters before leaving. Whether he is going for hajj or returning, whether on the way to Mecca, he is on his way to Mecca or returning from Mecca, he will not be brought before Allah for hisab kitab. He will not have to account for his deeds. And he will be forgiven.